Well, some new toys and some new things has happened around the channel, but today I'm actually going to talk about real time strategy games. This is a genre of video games that was much beloved back a long time ago, back in the days of Starcraft. And there's new ones that are surfacing here, but there's really a tale here to show you between a indie developer and X Blizzard employees. And I think it's worth to take a look. Your freedom awaits. Hail. It's about time. Well, there's two games that we're going to talk about today. One is called God Sworn, and the other one is called Stormgate. Both these games are real-time strategies. RTS is the uh, acronym that a lot of people use for them. They're both a very interesting story right now. God Sworn, uh, they're both in early access. And Godsworn has uh, 441 recommendations for it, where Stormgate has 703 people saying, talking about the game, and it is very mixed reviews for Stormgate. Stormgate is also being made by people that used to work on StarCraft II. Both these games, they're very similar in, in the stance of what they do. And if you look at some of the gameplay, it looks very reminiscent to like Warcraft and Starcraft. They look very, very good. The, the modeling are the same. You can even see in Stormgate, like this, this shot that we have here on the screen exactly looks like Terran to me. Uh, they, they look like the Terran of Starcraft. But if you go into these reviews, Stormgate is getting absolutely hammered and part of it is because they're monetizing every little thing of it where godsworn is very positive it is a a game there is still some uh some stuff here it is an early access game like the game is lacking in uh many in many ways because it's 30 dollars for a feature the the difference i'm going to say here $30 is for a game that is evolving right now. A game that's going to do probably really well in the indie scene. Where Stormgate, if you go into the price point, uh, right off the bat, you can pay $32.50. Uh, then there's DLCs already for this game where you have to pay up and above to get the entire game. And I believe one of them, I believe the high one, you actually unlock stuff that you get at level one. Level one missions. And it's when it comes down to it, you're spending $77.99 for this game. This is Canadian values, obviously. So you can see the very big difference here, why they're, why a lot of people are upset about one, and the other one, they're getting a little bit more praise because it, it, there's the feeling that you're getting the actual bang for your buck between these two. Now, if you follow anything on IndieBD, they're a modding site, they're a community that uh, showcases indie games and does a lot of things in that sense, in that realm. And they actually have an article here from uh, December 15th about Godsworn, um, talking about updates to the game. And at this point, if you scroll down here, they've they've got 40,000 people wishlisting this game. It is also an early access. So a lot of people are looking at this game going, okay, what's going to happen here in the near future? Are we going to get a amazing game that's going to do something more? So that's why we're seeing that type of thing. But if you go back to Stormgate, reading these reviews i bought this uh i bought the tier during kickstarter to support development of the game because i had confidence of the direction it was going technically speaking this pack doesn't meet the ultimate pledge which would uh tier which unlocks the first commander of each race in co-op mode however at the time of release there are five commanders one free commander one of each race and wars wars is not included in the bundle so right out of the gate uh as off you start in early access you're missing a commander you are not getting all the co content available there's also in-game purchases which i believe are like another 10 to 15 dollars per purchase in god in stormgate and you know when you go back and look at godsworn it's this it, it, people are just saying it's lacking they, they're not having certain things in it like this one a uh, major issue no save option mandatory co-op campaign like they're, these are things people want obviously one of the most boring rts's i've ever played and eh, i i mean it, it's hard to say they're an early access boring doesn't mean anything you can add more to it i uh, i almost can't believe it uh, finally a good rts uh ps add matchmaking asap right so obviously you've got the solo campaign right now 
once again, early access. Now let's talk about a little bit of money here. Stormgate went through a Kickstarter campaign where they've raised $2.3 million for this game. That's absolutely absurd. But what's even more absurd is Godsworn <laughs> has put in approximately $100,000 of their own money to be where they are today. They, they're both in early access, so their early access is kind of generating some, but when you look at Steam BD between these two games, you have Godsworn, there's only 300 people playing the game, um, but it is up there with a 92% uh, positive review ratio. Um, it's right now in the top 2,000, uh, just out, out of the top 2,000 of top sellers. But then you look at Stormgate and it's only a 60% positive ratio. They do have 4,000, almost 5,000 people in the game currently as of this video. So you can see where the difference was. Stormgate has also had a ton of news coverage in the journalist uh, scene uh, where Godsworn has had to put up their own pocket money to try and even get some articles going on online. And even then, it's only on sites that a lot of people don't know of and you don't see a lot of the PC gamers or Game Informer actually covering this game. Now, the thing with Stormgate or Frost Giant Studios, the ones that are creating the game, there's a lot of questions that, that just seem to be going against the wayside. This is a game with... the millions of dollars to spend at this point. They're ex-developers from Blizzard making this. People are saying this is StarCraft 3 at this point. But if you look at their game credits, this is an extensive list. This list of people that are out there, that I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. It goes on forever. Yes, they have their, their supporters at the bottom here. There's probably a good 50 to 100 supporters as well. Uh, but this list is absolutely massive, and that means that's many how many people are on payroll. When you have a Kickstarter campaign that makes uh, $2 million, if you want to make $100,000, that's 20, 20 employees. This, this game has more than that. So now, I'm what I'm seeing here is a game that possibly is ballooning in cost, and you're not going to get that, and now they're also adding in all these DLCs to try and make up that difference. Where with Godsworn, you literally have two people making the game. Now, it's really a tale of two different cities at this point. You have Godsworn at $100,000. You have Stormgate at over $2 million to start. They're way beyond that now. They've ballooned. They've got 5,000 people in game currently playing the game. Where does that really leave? You, you, this is once again the tellings of what's going on in indie development versus professional big scale development there's a lot of money there but what you're getting back is something that just it, it, it's greed induced it's induced to a point where a lot of people want to play these games but they don't want to shell out a lot of the money for that they, it, godsworn is a looks like a great game to pick up at this point because i from what i'm seeing and from what i'm hearing what i'm being told from people it's once you move forward with it, it's going to be one of these games, once it comes out of early access, that's going to do very well. But like Pal World and like uh, Helldivers out there, I think that they may fall off because they're going, they might balloon to a point where they need to bring on more people, need to spend more money on it. And if they're mostly spending money out of pocket, I think they need that revenue source in that sense. Hopefully in the future, they get a little bit more. If you look at the Twitter timelines for Thunder Oak Interactive who are making Godsworn, and their timeline is filled with many other indie developers, uh, even the person that made Ori and the Blind Forest I saw on their line, not their Twitter timeline. So they've got a lot of people in the industry. Now it's how do they move that forward? How do they make this game something more? Because I think Godsworn has uh, amazing potential behind it. Anyway, I'm your Proud Canadian Phoenix in a shadow. I hope you like this little bit of a different one. It was suggested to me by a viewer of the channel. And so I, I must say thank you to them. And until next time, you guys have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you again very soon.